What is up, my fellow shenanigans? After a long, long hiatus, I am once again back. This is, uh, of course, Ajax, and these are my rattle can shenanigans. My long, long overdue rattle can shenanigans. And speaking of things that are long overdue, this video is the final for the USAC group build. The group build that ended months ago. And while I... I meant to get this done in a timely manner. If you've been following my channel for any time at all, you know that my my build pace uh, hovers someplace between um, extraordinarily slow and glacial. And um, what didn't help is that 3D printer that you're seeing in the background behind the uh, the box for the GTX. Uh, I'll explain more about that in a future video because this time around, instead of just shooting one video at a time, I'll probably put a few in the can so that I have some content to like buffer those times where I decide to be a lazy spud. Anyway, it's a minute into this video. I'm still rambling. You guys want to see the finished product. So let me go and get that. And there it is, my final for the United Scale Auto Content Creators group build, the 1970 Plymouth GTX from Monogram. Uh, I want to say thank you as I spin this thing around to both Lucas e for hosting, um, because this was awesome, and to Mark Batson for choosing this subject because it was a great uh, muscle car to build. I enjoyed myself quite a bit, um, stretched myself quite a bit, and uh, had a great time during the uh, the entirety of it. And I also want to send a shout out and a thank you to all of the participants in this group build because you guys were a tremendous amount of inspiration. I watched a lot of your videos. I spent time on the Facebook site looking at, uh, at still photos and the like, and some of the work that you guys did was absolutely mind-blowing. A lot of it was very, very inspirational, and I'm not ashamed to say that some of it is going to be things that I will be outright stealing and adding to my own repertoire in the days to come. But to address this particular build here, uh, as you can no doubt tell, my idea was to do a pro touring iteration of the 70 GTX. Uh, from what you're seeing here, the color, the exterior color, is B5 Blue Metallic from Splash Paints with a 2K urethane clear, which I use on most uh, most of my shiny models. The interior is just a uh, uh, a cream white. It's actually from the uh, from the rattle can and has black uh, black carpet on the uh, the inside. And one of the things I noticed when I, uh, I finished putting things together and I mated the interior to the exterior was that I tend to use that cream color in a lot of the interiors of my build. So I'm going to see if I can wean myself off of it here in the, uh, the coming year with these uh, these next builds on the uh, on the horizon. I mean, like if if the spirit moves or if the subject requires it, then I won't stray too far from that. But I just noticed that, yeah, I tend to uh, to go with the light interiors and it may be because I want to show off detail. It may be because I like the off-white as, uh, as a contrast, but whatever the case is, I noticed that I do it a lot and I want to sort of kind of see if I can like, you know, step outside of that uh, that interior color. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. Moving on, you can see that there are a, a bunch of 3D printed parts on this. Um, part of the way that I managed to get the suspension to sit the way that I wanted to, because the car rides much lower than it otherwise would in stock, was to use 3D parts. Uh, the wheels and tires that you see there are a combination from Ryan Jones over at Z-Force Model Works. And of course, those are the Mopar rally wheels that you're seeing there. The side pipes, which I thought were a great homage to the uh, muscle cars of, uh, of yesteryear and a slight wink and a nod in the direction of the uh, AAR Cuda, were sourced from a black box uh, body kit that I picked up. Um, among other things that are on here. You can see it here in the, uh, uh, at this angle, but I will bring it up a little bit. So my apologies in advance for the shaky cam, but right there, you can see that I replaced the shifter in the interior with a, uh, a 3D printed iteration. And while the shifter in the kit was entirely serviceable, I just liked the 
aesthetic of that pistol grip there. And so I made the uh, I made the change, and it uh, it looked like it fit in the car better. Um, I, of course, that's like you know a matter of matter of personal opinion, but that uh, you know since I was a guy building the car, that was my uh, that was my call. That's my hot take, and I'm sticking to it. So the last major thing that I want to show as far as like 3D uh, printed components go is of course under the hood. So you'll give me a moment to wrestle the, uh, the hood off of the car here. I'll show you that oh, as I drop the hood, show you that I've got a, uh, yeah, a Hellcat in there. This Hellcat was, uh, was of course 3D printed. I sourced it from a gentleman Pixel 3D over on Pulse 3D. The, uh, the cold air intake that you're seeing there, as well as some of the other parts, uh, like the brake booster and master cylinder back there are also 3D parts. Just wanted to do a little something to uh, add um, a little bit more detail um, to the interior, or not the interior, but rather the, uh, the engine bay. So um, while you can't really make it out because my lighting is not great, I, uh, I wired and, uh, and plumbed the car as well. And yeah, put uh, managed to shoehorn this uh, this big Hellcat under the uh, under the hood, which was exactly exactly what I wanted to uh, to to accomplish here. I figured that if I was going to do the whole pro touring route, that we would want to have a monster power plant lurking underneath. And one of the things that makes me happiest about it is that I was able to get it to all fit under the hood with the hood sitting flush. So as far as like goals are concerned like mission accomplished right there i'm cool with that if nothing else had succeeded or had looked the part on this kit i was glad that i managed to get the hood to uh to close flush and then yeah as you know now can see i uh i filled in and covered up the uh the hood scoop just to uh just to clean up those lines on the hood i i thought it uh i thought it lent itself very well to the pro touring aesthetic much like how i got rid of the lion share or the vast majority of chrome on the uh, on the car you can see that the chrome uh, on the windows was uh was tinted black we uh made the bumpers body color um and blacked out both the front and rear uh rear decks um it just it, it gave it a, uh, a really nice look. And the stance, which is more uh, difficult to tell here in uh, in the pictures at this, or in the frame at this angle, is slightly raked. Uh, again, to just kind of like give a, uh, a subtle nod to the muscle car like heritage uh, that the pro, pro mod version, or not pro mod, but pro touring version of, uh, of this vehicle would have. Um, Lastly, as I just remember now looking at the thing, uh, the, the door handles. That door handle is not 3D printed. It's actually a resin piece from uh, Joseph over at Fireball Model Works. They are the, uh, the Mopar uh, door handles and they looked they look great. I bought them some time ago. I used them on another project and then got a chance to use them here uh, once again. And yeah, they, they don't disappoint at all. Um, Lastly, one of the things that I printed that, you know, is, is not here is a, uh, uh, 70s style, uh, side mirror for the car. I built it, or I'm sorry, I built it, right? I printed it rather, and I glued it in place. And as I was picking the car up and putting it away, putting it in the box, like in lieu or in preparation of shooting this video, I, uh, I sat it down, uh, clipped the, uh, the mirror with my thumb and broke it because it was a very small, very fragile part. And despite the fact that I had tried to reinforce it with a drop of super glue, it still shattered right off. So I, I peeled it off. My plan is at some point here, uh, very shortly to 3D print a uh, another mirror and uh, like clean it up, uh, get it ready. And hopefully like this time around, instead of using super glue, I'll probably try and use some, uh, just a tiny little bit of epoxy to really kind of, uh, make sure that that attachment is, uh, is solid for the base of the mirror versus the, uh, the actual side mirror itself. But that'll be, that'll be something that'll get taken care of in a, um, you know, in a future, uh, a future entry. Um, if, 
ever I revisit this in a rattle can retrospective, you guys will see my, uh, my handiwork there. Anyhow, I've been rambling on long enough. Let me spin this bad boy around one more time as I close things or wrap things up here. Guys, I apologize for not having posted any videos in a long time. Uh, long story short, um, along with uh, schedule changes, I fell deep, deep, deep into the well of 3D printing. And I actually have a video that I'm going to shoot to discuss that. Um, thanks in part to uh, James Tester bringing, uh, bringing up the subject. So uh, before, I, uh, before I go off on a wild tangent though, I'm going to wrap this video up and I'm going to thank you guys for watching and I will catch up with you in the next one. Thanks.